What we've seen here is 2069. It's a clip from a film, from the film, which I hope to uh, make one, one day, inshallah, soon, is where, the, uh, where Virtual Geographic sends the, uh, the cyborg to record one incident. And that's, that's how the, 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 the flavor of the, of the film is going to be, where we're kind of uh, thrown into these fantastical situations where uh, the, the, the cyborg sort of, we're, we're witnessing the, um, you know, through the eyes of the cyborg, what, what's the, the, an event that's going to happen, where we know it's going to happen. And we're, we're kind of like, you know, we discover it along with the cyborg. Uh, there is a netherverse that's discovered. Again, I, I try to include as many local, regional, uh, you know, cultural references in the, in the stories. Um, what, what I wanted to make uh, this, this uh, parallel universe that's running within, and you know, we as Muslims, we have a, a, a strong belief that you know, we, we, have, we occupy the same dimension as the jinns, which is, which is basically like, uh, we, we just don't see them, they're, they're using the, the, the same, um, the, the same uh, dimension that we're in. So, uh, so scientists discover that this the dimension is, is actually accessible, and that is what leads to uh, the possibility of time travel. Uh, 2102, there's another incident that happens. The Indochina Cold War goes into effect, where it's not a bloody war, but it's more about technology, where, where there's the two superpowers of that time are actually battling it out to destroy the other person's technology. So this happens, and a year later, uh, the um, the RTID gets destroyed because of this war. So now one generation has passed and people are totally dependent on this technology which, is, which was freely accessible to them at any time. Now all of a sudden that is wiped out. So centuries of data and history and everything is, is completely wiped out now. People don't have access to that information anymore. So what, what the scientists do is um, they, 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 send, they create the, uh, the cyborg character and they send him back in time to record the lost history. And that's where this whole, uh, this whole episode of Zero Era comes in. Our main character is XC7, Zero Era 7. He's, the, he's a, a cyborg. He's, uh, he's put together for the sole purpose of uh, going back in time. And, and you know, he's equipped for, for time travel. He's got, he's got these uh, superhuman abilities. He's got this great exoskeleton armor, which, uh, um, which is virtually non-destructible. And then there's, uh, he has, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fairly complex character because he's discovering himself. He's just opened his eyes in the machine. So along with, with the character, we're discovering him as well. Uh, he discovers that he has a few different computers that govern him. Virtual Geographic is, is, is kind of controlling him. He is the advancement of artificial intelligence, with it, which is natural intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence is based on logic. Uh, natural intelligence is based on logic and instinct. So he has a little bit of human in him. This uh, gruesome looking character is actually his combat override program that's installed in him. So whenever he's faced into this life-threatening situation, he becomes that guy. This is uh, the leading bad guy that will be featured in the, uh, in the film. Uh, it's, uh, he's called Facet. He's the first authority in cyber espionage and terrorism. And he's after our hero XE7 because he considers himself uh, the reason why cyber crime is happening. Uh, here's a good guy, uh, Dr. Barry Weisner. Uh, he inevitably becomes the reason why the, uh, uh, the whole uh, the RTID gets destroyed. Uh, so he's, he's like the good bad guy. So one of, one of the things that will be happening is XC7 will be sent to destroy him to stop that from happening uh, in a future episode, but discovers that he's actually not as bad as he seems. Here are some uh, production stills that we had uh, made for the film.
Again, this is purely without any um, backing or support or, you know, because we just had like uh, re very limited resources that we had at hand and uh, we managed to come up with this. We're experimenting with like different looks for zero error. Uh, we have a nice uh, plan in mind that once, once this, uh, this IP um, becomes uh, popular, we actually have um, a, a plan for making, making into short series, um, into merchandise, uh, comic books, and, um, and so on. This is some publicity that we've received through the media and uh, throughout last year, this year, and uh, we've got a good fan following. There's a, there's, we get regular hits from 88 countries worldwide on the zero error side. We have a lot of following on Twitter, Facebook, so please um, check it out, XERO error every, anywhere. Uh, we managed to uh, get some recognition and accolades during this time. Uh, we were featured at uh, some of these festivals, and uh, a couple of months ago we were featured at the Sci-Fi London, and uh, there was um, Icon TLV will be happening possibly next month. So it's still kind of fresh and still doing the rounds. Uh, so very, very thankful that uh, we managed to get this far with, with just a very homegrown and independent effort. Fub City is the other uh, IP, the intellectual property that I wanted to develop. This is again aimed for um, a different type of an audience. This is, this is again in the humorous genre. This is probably in the Family Guy, Simpsons sort of a thing. It's about, it's, it's about expats like me growing up in an Arab country. That's, that's the idea because there's a lot of demographic over here which, which, which appeal to that because I, I used to do uh, laser shows um, uh, before and I animated one show once where, where I, I, I showed this, uh, this little arrow of a character that, that travels to different countries and there was a huge audience. So any country that it went to, the people were really ecstatic and you know, they were like applauding, like that's my country. So I, I see this as a, as a big potential you know, in, in reaching out to the, uh, possibly the 80% of the uh, non-Emirati crowd. And, and you know, something that appeals generally to a wide range of audience. Uh, to take this forward, um, again, we are a very small setup. We're a startup. We started in 2007. Whatever was done was a purely independent effort. To take it forward, we actually invite uh, people who are in the, in the business, longer producers, um, investors, to, to actually um, come and discuss this and, and see how we can collaborate to take it forward. So we're very much uh, open for, uh, for discussion, and if there's any anyone who can suggest or advise, um, you know how how we can take this forward, I would really appreciate it. Actually. And uh, that covers the presentation, actually. So. Uh, <laughs>